Hi, in this video we're going to talk about sample versus sampling distributions, two things that sound very similar, build upon each other, but are actually quite different, and provide a light introduction to the central limit theorem. So assume we have this population that you're taking samples from. You can go out and grab many, many samples from this population. And looking at one sample at a time, from within each sample we can calculate a sample statistic. If the data that you're collecting on the sampled individuals is numerical, this sample statistic might be a sample mean. For example, if you're asking each sampled individual their age, we might calculate the average age and call that our sample mean, our sample statistic. If, on the other hand, the data is categorical, we might be, um, for example, asking them whether or not they're going to be voting in the next presidential election, we could calculate sample proportions. So we can calculate such statistics from each one of the samples that we have gathered, and at the end, we end up with a series of observations, a series of sample statistics that arise from each one of the samples. We would expect these to be somewhat similar to each other if our sampling scheme is good and our sample size is sufficiently large, but we would not expect them to be exactly the same. So the distribution of these sample statistics is basically what we call the sampling distribution. On the other hand, the distribution of the observations from within each sample is what we call sample distribution. So let's give an example. Assume that we're interested in the average height of U.S. women. So our population is all U.S. women, and we'll call our population size capital N. The parameter of interest here is the average height. Height is a numerical variable, so we're calculating an average or a mean, so we can call that our mu, the population mean. Let's assume we had data from every single woman in the U.S. Now, let's stop here for a second. If we had this data, we wouldn't need to do any more in terms of sampling from this population because we would already have the answer. But let's assume that we have this, and using this data, we could find the population mean which would be probably about 65 inches. In order to calculate that, all that we would need to do is add up the heights of each one of the women in the population, I'm calling each one of these women an X, and divide it by our total population size, and calculate our population parameter mu, which we said we might expect to be around 65 inches. Using these data, we could also calculate the population standard deviation. Just like we have a formula for the mean, we have one for the standard deviation. We could plug all of these women's heights in there and calculate a measure for the variability of these heights. We wouldn't expect this number to be very small, since the heights of all women in the U.S. are probably very variable. For example, it's possible to find women as short as 4 feet to as tall as 7 feet tall. Now let's assume that we're going to take a random sample of a thousand women from each state. So I start alphabetically at Alabama. I go out and randomly sample a thousand women from this state. I'm calling each one of these ladies an X as well. And using these data, I can calculate a sample average for Alabama. I go out to many, many other states. I end up in North Carolina. Also grab a series of thousand women. I'm randomly sampling them record their heights, and calculate a state average, a sample state average for North Carolina, go out to many, many more states, and finally end up in Wyoming. Once again, collect a random sample of a thousand women, and calculate the average height um, based on the sample data. So now our new data set consists of sample means. So instead of um, my data being individuals whose heights I'm recording, now my data is actually sample statistics. The distribution of these sample means is what we call the sampling distribution. Let's take a look at some of the properties of the sampling distribution. The mean of the sample means will probably be around 65 inches as well, because we wouldn't expect to find um, too many states that are too far off, that yield a sample average that are too far off from the population mean. The standard deviation of the sample means, so now we're looking at how variable is, are these data, also called the standard error, remember, will probably be much lower than the population standard deviation since we would expect the average height for each state to be pretty close to one another. For example, we wouldn't expect to find a state where the average height is as low as 4 feet or as high as 7 feet. So the variability of the sample means is going to be lower than the variability in the actual population. We're going to talk a little bit later about how much lower we would expect that to be.
In fact, the standard error will decrease as the sample size n increases. So if instead of sampling a thousand women, I had actually gone out and sampled fewer women from each state, so let's say I'm sampling only three at a time, we would expect the sample averages to be much more variable. If I'm really going as low as sampling three women from each state, it is possible that I grab an individual who's maybe very short or very tall and their height is going to have a whole lot more bearing in that, on that state's average. If on the other hand I'm sampling many many more women such as a thousand women from each state even though I might have a few extreme observations in that sample we wouldn't expect those to have as much bearing on our sample mean. To formalize what we just talked about, let's go back to the central limit theorem. The central limit theorem tells us about the distribution of sample statistics. So in this case, we're going to focus on the sample mean. Later on, we're going to talk about the sample proportion as well. So we said that x bar is going to have a distribution centered somewhere around the population mean. And we said that the standard error of x bar is going to be lower than sigma. And in this case, uh, we're formalizing the def uh, the value for the standard error and we're saying that the um, standard error can be calculated as the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So we can once again see the property that as n goes up, as the denominator goes up, we would expect the standard error to go down, but we don't expect a one-to-one -one relationship between these two because it's only going to go down by the square root of n as opposed to the absolute value of it. So now we talked about the center of the distribution, and we also said something about the spread of the distribution. Remember when describing distributions, we always talk about three things, center, spread, and also shape. So what do, would we expect the shape of this distribution to be? The central limit theorem tells us that this distribution's shape is gonna be nearly normal. So formally, we can say that our sample mean is going to be distributed nearly normally, with mean at the population mean and standard error equal to the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. This of course is only going to hold as long as certain conditions hold. First off, we need our observations to be independent. So our obs observations within each sample need to be independent of each other with respect to the variable that we're interested in. In order to ensure this, we could think about random sample or random assignment depending on whether we're doing an observational study or an experiment. And we also don't want our samples to be very huge. It is true that in statistics, larger samples are better but we don't we want to also have an upper bound to the size of our sample because if you sample a huge chunk of your population it's going to be very difficult to ensure independence between the observations we know that within a population observations are independent you and your family members are within the population of the u.s so any female in your family is going to have heights that are dependent on each other so when we're sampling, we want to make sure that if we've grabbed somebody from your family that we don't grab another one. And in order to be able to make sure that that doesn't happen, we don't want to sample a huge chunk of our population. So the first uh, condition is about independence. The second one is about, it's a balance between our sample size and the distribution of the population. So if the population distribution is nearly normal to begin with, we really don't e need to think about how large our sample is. But if it's not, then the sample size should be at least 30. So we would want n to be uh, greater than or equal to 30. And we wouldn't want our population distribution to be extremely skewed. But we talked about um, the idea that as the sample size increases, we wouldn't expect our sample averages to be very, very variable, um, which kind of means that the more skewed the population distribution, the higher sample size we would need to ensure a nearly normal distribution of our sample statistic, in this case, the sample mean. I hope that this has been helpful for clarifying the differences between sample and sampling distributions and has been a good introduction to the central limit theorem. Thank you for watching.